Two months ago, I shared my story of how I related to the short games I cover every week. What attracted me to them, what they mean to me, and why I basically decided to try and build a career talking about them. And then I asked you guys to tell me what they meant to you. And you guys had a lot to say. So, after taking a bit to organize a lot of notes, here's what I came away learning from all of you. Unsurprisingly, my story is far from unique. 12-hour workdays, families, children, life inevitably has a way of filling itself up. And I'm far from the only person who's found that as other responsibilities take over, there just isn't as much time as there used to be. 100-hour RPGs are just an unrealistic endeavor, and games you can finish in a session or two just fit that lifestyle better. But just as often, family became a deciding factor in another way. Having something to play together. Whether it's distant relatives coming into town for the holidays or a spouse you live with every day but only get a few hours to play together, it's just easier to enjoy something like Portal together on a couch than, say, Final Fantasy. Short games are a communal glue like no other. Sure, communal play is one of video games' best-selling points in general, but nothing has a lower bar for entry than the one-session game. There just aren't any of the usual logistical issues you might run into trying to all follow along with a run of The Witcher 3 or smack each other around in Smash Bros when half of you don't even play, or god forbid trying to do something like coordinate light levels in Destiny when one guy's playing the game daily and everyone else jumps on once a week. I've been there. It's rough. And there's a power in being able to play a game with the same casual ease you could pop on a movie. Hey, wanna check out Nidhogg? What about that new party game that just came out? You mean you've never played Transistor? Well, now we know what we're doing for the next three hours. And you know what? That's a sentiment I can strongly sympathize with, because let me tell you about the time a bunch of absolute mad lads and I got together and we tried to play through a Persona game as a collective group. It was, in a way, weirdly thematic, because meeting once a week for a group game kept us progressing in almost real time. The game actually started in the spring and ended in December, which was cool to feel time pass at the same rate as in the game. But also, that means it took us almost a fucking year to finish it. And if you're lucky enough to have friends that can meet with you once a week for a year solid, it's really tough to replicate that kind of friendship, so hold on to those friends. No, seriously, tie them to a chair if you have to. That shit don't happen twice. For others, shorter games are less about a time or lifestyle restriction and more of an aesthetic preference. I've had people bring up different personal reasons for this, everything from weightier disassociations with competitive multiplayer games that once consumed their entire life, to just preferring tightly constructed, thematically laser-focused games. But they can all kind of be clumped together into one golden statement. The one session game gets in there, executes what it wants to do, and then it doesn't take up any more of your time. You get one tight, unbroken package that by necessity has to focus on doing only one or two things because of its own time constraints. And because you can basically play it in the time it takes to watch a movie, you're not going to have to worry about forgetting plot points you last saw mentioned two or three months ago. And I'm not here to bash more sprawling adventures, they're just as fun. And even I indulge in them, knowing full well I'll never see their endings, but these shorter games all have their own artistic selling points, even for people with all the time in the world. But there are other ways short games have become important parts of people's lives, including some ways I had never thought about. Primary among them was what a boon these games can be for other developers, who might benefit from these games more than anyone else. I've touched on the downright criminal conditions many video game developers work under before. They're overworked, underpaid, let go on a regular basis through no fault of their own, and held to absurd standards by fans that can turn around in a heartbeat and start abusing them. And one of the most endemic issues they face is the fact that the 80-hour work week is a normal practice, not an outlying one. And let me tell you, as someone who's been working two jobs for two years now, that level of workload does not leave a whole lot of room for anything else. Of all the people out there, actual game developers have the least time of all to actually play a video game. But just because they're busy doesn't mean developers don't play games. On the contrary, playing them is a downright critical part of their jobs. In order to create good art of any variety, be it a book or a game or just a really slapping YouTube video, you can't solely experience it from the side of the creator. You also have to be the player and absorb as much as possible. Nothing is made in a vacuum, and no matter how good you are, your work is always going to benefit from understanding what other ideas are already out there and why they work. 
But this leaves us with a bit of a paradox, doesn't it? If you want to be a game developer, you're never going to have any time for the rest of your career as you're chained to your desk for three months at a time. But if you want to be any good at your job, you have to find non-existent time to actually play something as well. And this paradox can be made a little bit less onerous by the increasing prevalence of shorter, tighter games. You can experience more takes on the same genre and play around with more interesting mechanical concepts faster. These games can also be a little bit easier to dissect, since their scope tends to be a little more limited to fit their brief runtime, and they tend to be made by smaller teams. That's not to say these games are simple by any means, but one doesn't have to trace the fingerprints of a hundred different developers across a massive 50-hour open-world adventure and figure out how all those different viewpoints molded the game, a task that frankly is just plain impossible without just directly asking a good number of the people who were in the room making it. All of these facets made shorter games ideal for the developers who reached out and talked to me, both those looking to learn lessons on how to perfect their craft and those just looking for inspiration in their own work. Obviously, it does nothing to fix the actual root of the problem. Workers' rights. But busy developers and weekend hobbyists alike have impressed upon me just how helpful short games can be. But developers, of course, aren't the only ones who benefit from short games. There's also the idea of game length being an accessibility issue. I've toyed with using that phrase in the past, but always stepped back from it because it always felt like putting a busy schedule side by side with actual disabilities was a bit... insensitive? But as some of you guys have informed me, no, this is actually an accessibility issue. Straight up. I've had people tell me about how serious issues like chronic pain and spinal defects have devastated their ability to function throughout the day. And never mind playing games, it's a struggle just to get out of bed. When you have difficulties finding the energy to do literally anything, yes, finding the energy to finish an 80-hour game can actually be an ordeal. And having games that these people can actually complete, that they can fully experience, is a genuine issue that they care about. And outside of energy-sucking health issues, I've also had people mention to me how things like ADHD can cause them to never find the motivation to play a longer game all the way through. Now, obviously, I'm not out here saying that every game needs to be shorter so that everyone can enjoy them, but I am saying that it's wonderful that something already exists that can cater to these people's situations. Because none of these situations I've described are unique. This video made four separate cases for why people are attracted to shorter games, and every single one of them was expressed to me by multiple people who all felt passionate enough to sit down and spend an entire afternoon writing emails to me about why they were so important to them. And so I want to finish this video by thanking everyone who reached out to talk to me. Because as someone who can't find a spare afternoon myself, I can't think of a more sincere sign of support. I got way more people telling me about their experiences than I ever expected. And even if I didn't get a chance to talk to everyone as much as I would have liked, your stories all clearly came from the heart and touched me. And while we're wrapping up this victory lap over 5,000 subscribers, and counting, thank you to each and every one of you who have subscribed, shared my stuff with people you know, and come back to watch every week. I don't make a secret of the fact that I want to make this channel my full-time gig, and every week, you guys all bring me a little bit closer to getting to live that dream. So one more thank you. I hope you enjoyed this first 5,000 subs special. Thanks for watching this far, and I'll see you all next time.